Hello, my name is Sai Chen, and I'm from Open Source Strategies. Today I'd like to talk about an open source application that we've built with Voltron and the business models around it. So, just a little bit of background about myself. I used to be a portfolio manager. I managed investment portfolios of mortgages, derivatives, and securitized assets for pension funds, central banks, hedge funds, and endowments. And then in 1999, which is now 20 years ago, my wife and I started an online retail business called GraciousStyle.com, literally in a spare bedroom. And being started like that way with no budget for expensive software, we did everything with open source software. And I really loved the idea and what you could do with open source. So I started a company called Open Source Strategies to develop and market open source software, specifically for businesses. We created something called op the OpenTAPS Open Source ERP and CRM system, which is an enterprise application suite that's been used by a lot of different companies all over the world. And a couple years ago, I decided to shift my focus to sustainability and energy. So looking through open source again, I found out about Voltron, and that's why I'm here today. So today I'd like to talk about two things with you. One is what we're doing to build an open source application with Voltron. And two is the business models that you could have around an open source application like what we're building and around Voltron. Because today's world with software being on the cloud and everything being as interconnected as it is, the applications and the business model really go hand in hand and they define each other. But first, just to get this out of the way, whenever I tell people I work with open source software, the first question is always, well, can you make any money doing that? Well, here are just a few of the most successful companies that have done it with open source software. So I hope that could answer your question. But really, let's take a step back. Every day, companies are giving us free things. You can get free samples at the grocery store. You can get free cell phones. You can get all sorts of other free things out there. So in that way, open source is actually not even original. And why do companies give us free things? Because free things unlock entire value chain for people. If you got a free cell phone, you're gonna end up paying for a data plan. You're gonna end up paying for apps. You're gonna end up paying for content. And then who knows what else you're going to end up paying for. And you're going to do that over many years until it would look really smart for them to have given you that free cell phone in the first place. And similarly, in the energy field, there's also a value chain. People pay for equipment and installation. They then pay for the ongoing maintenance of the equipment. They'll pay for ongoing optimization of the equipment to make sure that it's running at its best and saving you as much energy as possible. They'll pay for services that help them do rate arbitrage. For example, reduce demand charges or take advantage of time of use charges from their utility. And they'll pay for services that provide grid services and help them make money with things like demand response. In each and every one of those services that people offer, you notice that there's data, 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 data. Data is often a very small part of these services, but it's a very crucial part of those services, and it sometimes can be very difficult to get that data. And that's what's great about Voltron, because Voltron is there to help you get that data and get it cheaply and effectively. So what we've been building is something called the OpenTAPS Smart Energy Application Suite. And it's built on top of Voltron to make the acquiring and working with data easy. And we've released it on the open source LGPL3 license so that you can build your application and your business with it. So a quick overview of the architecture of OpenTAPS. 
so what we're doing is we're using Voltron and all its embedded protocols to get energy data and then storing them in a time series database, which currently is Crate. By the way, we can also get data from a Haystack client that's embedded in OpenTAS. So we could eventually plug in other devices as well. And then once the data is in Crate, then we tag it with meta tags. Currently, a lot of them are based on this thing called the Project Haystack. We also have a PostgreSQL database for storing business data in a traditional relational database. Now this is in the Django um, application framework and written in Python. And we provide our output to you in three ways. Through a web-based user interface, through an embedded Haystack server in OpenTAS so that you can then plug in other applications on top of OpenTAS and then through the Grafana dashboard. Let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so in this screen, you can upload the registry config CSV files and the device files from Voltron into OpenTAPS. And here's what they would look like once they've been imported. So they're imported as something that we call topics to distinguish them from data points which have been created in our system and usually tagged. As you can see, you can filter the list of topics to see what there is. But one of the things that we've introduced to help make the tagging process easier is rules. So you have a set of rules and they'll look for um, keywords in your topics or they could look for the BACnet fields and their values to find um, the topics and then they can then tag those topics with standard um, haystack tags and you can then save these rules export them and import them so you could take it to different sites if you need to and run them over and over again to help make tagging of data easier And this is what a data point that's been imported and tagged looks like. So here are all the point uh, tags, its value, and then we can make a little chart for you. So the application allows you to set up your sites and your buildings and set up all the equipment at each site. And again, the sites themselves could be tagged. And then there are these dashboards. And the dashboards are created with haystack tags. So for example, it finds the space air temperature of all your, your air handlers by looking for equipment that's been tagged as AHUs and then looking for the space air temperature tags and populating this dashboard. So as you add more equipment and tag them, they'll just automatically show up here. You can also use the system to attach and store your documents, your warranty information, your manuals, uh, link to training videos on YouTube or Vimeo, uh, record your service notes and your service calls and everything together in one place. And then here's something else fun to do with Haystack tags, auto-generating Grafana dashboards. So what's happening here is we made a Grafana dashboard. And then we replaced all the data points of the Grafana dashboard with combinations of haystack tags. And then we have a script that then generates more and more of these dashboards and loads them into Grafana for you. So for each piece of equipment that has these data points, it will automatically generate a dashboard like this. And then, um, those dashboards can be either embedded into our user interface or accessed through the Grafana user interface. And finally, this is something that I think will be really important as we go along here, is the ability to define services and run applications, again, using tag data. So this is for something called the Economizer from the Voltron Applications Repository. 
Well, what we did is we replaced all the parameters for the data points that was in the economizer app with haystack tags. And then we define it as a service like this in the JSON format of what each parameter's tag should be. So then we have a service um, runner which will go out and find the data points based on those tags and feed it into the modified economizer and run those. So those apps in the Voltron applications like the automated recommissioning, um, the intelligent load control, the fault detection, economizer, all those different things could be configured to run automatically for all the different equipment at all the different sites out there using this kind of an architecture. Okay, so what's next for us? This is like a uh, mystery novel. What did I tell you at the very beginning that I used to do? I was a portfolio manager. I managed an investment portfolio. And what I saw in that experience over and over again is that people use data to unlock financing and provide capital for all sorts of different assets. So when I came in to look at clean energy, what I saw was there was on one hand a lack of technology. I was reading that 90% of the buildings under 100,000 square feet actually have no building automation system. And on the other hand, a lot of people talk about a lack of access to capital and financing. And to me, these two problems are actually two sides of the same coin. It's the lack of technology that's preventing data from getting out there that then unlock the financing. So my goal is to use open source software to unlock financing for clean energy. And eventually what I'd like to do is create this sort of virtuous cycle, if you will now, a flywheel effect, where by providing open source software, we can unlock data out there, which would then allow us to structure financing, which would then allow us to put more open source software and clean energy out there in the hands of people. Okay, so then what does this mean for you? How could you use open source software like Voltron and OpenTAPS? Well, think of this as a way to get the data faster, easier, and cheaper. And once you have that data, it'll give you a way to build your business faster using open source. And then on top of those three things that you're getting, try to provide a value added service. Find a new use case that's not well addressed and build a business model around it. For example, can you do demand response using the data that you're gathering? Can you help people do those rate arbitrages? Can you help people optimize their building performance using data more effectively? One thing I like to remind you is try to find something that is a new use case where there's not as established uh, competitors so that open source can help you get there faster. A lot of times when people try to take a free thing and replace something people are already used to paying for, that's actually quite difficult. The other thing to remember is that the open source community is actually a great source of leads. What I see time and again is people will take an open source project and say, oh, this is great, thank you very much, and then they'll run off with it. And what they don't realize is that every day there's people in that open source community who could be your customers. So thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope what we built could be helpful to what you're doing. And down the road, we could also help finance more clean energy with you. And for more information, take a look at our website, opentaps.org, or go to sidechain at opensourcestrategies.com. Thank you.